Good morning and welcome to this service of worship from Alloway Parish Church. It's my honour to lead you in worship again this week. And I hope that you feel God's presence in the prayer, in the praise and also in the message from Scripture. We begin our time of worship by singing together Psalm 23, The Lord's My Shepherd to the beautiful arrangement by the wonderful Stuart Townend. Our first reading today is Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading is taken from the New Testament, Romans 8, verses 31 to 39. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? 
Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, and thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word. In a moment, we're going to have a time of reflection as we listen to the beautiful musical melody of Handel's Largo. My grandmother was an organist in church, and this was one of her most favourite pieces of music to play. And we also had this music at both of my parents' funerals. I'll explain more about the significance of the music in the reflection later. But for the moment, let us reflect as we listen to Handel's Largo. Last week, I spoke about my grandfather's Davy lamp, 
and I suggested that the lamp provided light for my grandfather as he worked down the pits at Dracorn. And the lamp also kept him safe. And I suggested that in the same way as the lamp provided light and guidance for my grandfather, the Word of God provides us with guidance as we go through life and also helps us to keep safe on our journey of life. I also said last week that I would bring back my grandfather's daily lamp this week, and indeed here it is. This week I want to think about how this lamp, being my grandfather's, has special significance for me. And I want to use this as a basis for a reflection this morning. When I look at this Davy lamp, and more significantly when I hold it, I get a mixture of different emotions. On the one hand, I get the emotions associated with great loss. When I was only six years old, my grandfather died, and he made such a wonderful impression on my life that when I hold this lamp and when I see it, I feel sad at the loss of my grandfather because I miss him greatly. And I also believe that through the influence of my grandparents that I was led to ministry later in life and in fact I get ordained on Thursday. I loved my grandfather so much and can fondly remember the times that we shared together. But at the same time, I also remember the pain associated with his death. And although I was only six, I remember my mother having to comfort me as I sobbed on my bed. My grandfather meant so much to me. And when I see the Davy lamp, some of that pain returns because I still miss him and I still grieve for him. At the same time, however, when I hold the Davy lamp or when I look at it, I also experience great happiness because I think about the great times that I shared with my grandfather. I remember his love and his warmth. I remember the times that we shared together as he cared for his roses in the garden. I remember the times that we fed the pigeons on the prom at Rothsey. And I also remember the times when he would open his bag of polypastels and offer me one from the bag. So the Davy lamp, even when I remember how much I miss my grandfather, it also brings me back some very good memories and gives me a great sense of comfort. And perhaps you have had similar experiences when you have the pain associated with the loss of someone, but also have great memories in the times that you share together. And that perhaps gives you a great sense of comfort. Perhaps when you visit the grave of a loved one or when you look at a particular photo, when you see or touch a particular object, when you visit a special place, when you think of particularly significant days in the year, when you smell a particular aroma or when you hear a particular piece of music. I'm sure that we all have this strange experience of these things bringing us sadness and sorrow, but yet at the same time bringing us great comfort. And that's why I chose Handel's Largo for a reflection this morning. Whilst this music immediately brings to me a sense of great loss and grief, because it makes me instantly think of my grandmother and also about the funerals of my parents. It also brings me great comfort 
because it reminds me of the good times and the love that I shared with these special people in my life. It is a fact that we will all go through difficult times in our lives. And some folk have experienced and will experience much more difficult times than I have experienced in my life. But we are assured in scripture that despite facing such times, that God will never leave us. Even although we might feel sad or we might feel down, when we feel that everything is dark around us, we can find comfort, sure in the knowledge that God will never leave us or forsake us. In our Old Testament reading this morning, in Psalm 23, we read these words. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. Isn't it great to know that even though we face challenging times in our lives, such as illness in ourselves or in those that we love, or in bereavement or loneliness, when we experience depression or anxiety, unemployment, global pandemics, financial worries or strained relationships. Even though we face such difficult times, we know that God is still with us. And as my mother put her arms around me when I was sobbing because of the death of my grandfather, God is always there to comfort us in his holy presence and through his word that we find in scripture. He is there to guide us, to protect us and to give us peace as we journey through life. We are reminded of such assurances in the old and favourite hymn by George Matheson. O love that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee. O joy that seekest me through pain, I close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not in vain. So even although it may be raining around us, we can look for the sunshine and look for the rainbow. The final point that I would like to make, again using my grandfather's Davy lamp by way of illustration, is that God will never leave us or forsake us. Attached to my grandfather's Davy lamp is a little brass disc with his number punched onto it. And his number was 1135. This token or tally would be given by my grandfather at the top of the mine shaft, and in return, he would be given his Davy lamp. His tally would then be hung on a board at the top of the pit. Should an emergency happen down the pit, it was easy to know who was in danger because their tally would still be on the board. The miners, though they were down the pit, would never be forgotten. They were in darkness, and yet their token, their tally, was still on the board. They would not be forgotten. And in much the same way, I would like to suggest that all who give their life to Jesus have their token on the tally board in heaven. God will never forget about us. He will never leave us. He has our token on his board and he is there for us at all times. As we also read in Psalm 23, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And in our passage from the New Testament in Romans, we heard these words. 
If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in us in Christ Jesus our Lord. As we continue on our journey of life, let us be reassured with the knowledge that God is with us at all times and he is there to provide comfort in the challenges that life is sure to throw at us. I close by offering to you the words of the ironic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We now take time to offer our prayers to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, we rejoice to be as one in your great family on earth and in heaven, invited by you into your holy presence to worship and adore you as part of the worldwide family of God. We approach you, holy God, the God who keeps the mystery of the divinity, but who shows us through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, what it is to be divinely human. We adore you, Creator God, who has made each of us according to your plan. We come from far and wide, with ease and at great cost, with hope and concern to apply ourselves and to heed your call. We draw near to you, understanding God, and ask that you help us not to covet yesterday, but to dream of a new tomorrow, so that all might be welcome in your community of faith, so that the whole world may know your love. We look upon you, tender God, the God who keeps loving us despite our failures. We bow our hearts and minds in humility, trusting in your forgiveness, leaning on your promise of a welcome to your world. We need you, loving God, now more than ever, and we come to you conscious of our own needs and the needs of others. We bring before you those in our church, in our neighbourhood, in our town, our country and across the world who need your help this day. We pray for those who follow you and ask that you help them to influence others for good. Deepen their love for you and for the people around them. We pray for families at this time, that they support each other, love each other and help each other at this time amid the challenges and uncertainties of COVID-19. We pray for teachers, for students, and for all those in positions of authority and leadership, both locally and throughout the world. Guide them all that they may act with integrity, justice, morality, and freedom. We pray for the lost, the hurting, the lonely, the sick, the bereaved, and those who are imprisoned behind both visible and invisible walls. Bring your comfort, your peace, and your calming presence to those who are without hope, we pray. We ask that you protect the defenceless and hold them close to your heart. Lord, there are so many in need 
but we know that you are adequate for every need. Your name is powerful and your prayer is great. So it is in your name that we pray and believe. And we pray further by saying the words of the prayer that you taught us, the Lord's Prayer, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now conclude this time of worship as we sing together, All Our Hope on God is Founded. Thank you for joining me for this service of worship. We now say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.